I'm recording. Hey. Let's get started. All right, everybody. Hello. Welcome back. Hello. Good to see oh. you. I was going to oh. do this. Oh, no. Oh, there wow. You saw us, saw us prematurely. Saw the uh, the Oz before the, uh, the curtain. Oh, my gosh. I'm surprised I had my shirt on. Uh, you... Who's oh. missing out? Who's missing out? Good old everybody. Uh, I gotta say, Ben Hamin, I have missed you. I have missed my brother, <laughs> I haven't seen you in a very long time. So let oh. me see you real quick. Let me get you on that screen. Oh yeah! Oh man, look at me, bright as ever. Oh man! Oh man! I like Here that, though, man. <laughs> everybody knows I'm attracted to pale. That's there a fact. It is. <laughs> That's a fact. Why so hang out, Ben? Uh, nah, he's a great guy. Also love that Ben and I. Ben is part of my. Um, my beginning stages of an actor since Ben was there. Oh man! Stages of me. Improv, improv comedy. Cuckoo! <laughs> <laughs> like my favorite thing. That's like my. <laughs> Sorry. It's like my favorite thing. Love it. Yeah, I um, love the. I love that movie. But today, today we have two very serious and emotional movies. All right, I we have good time and uncut gems. You're on side by side. Side by movie podcast with two movies with two friends watching two movies and they're having too much fun. Two 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 friends. How uh, we're your hosts, CJ Robles. And I'm Ben Garrett. And welcome to Side by Side. Good to see you. Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, we've we've <laughs> Good morrow. Hello, good sir. Hello. We're not live today, so I'm more comfortable. Oh, we're not. It says live, so you fooled me. Ha ha. Ha ha. It's live, but it's in record only mode. You got so, me good, uh, chicken. <laughs> you know, you got me good, you, buddy. Okay, pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> pilgrim. Oh. Hey, man. No, we, we haven't caught up in a minute. It's been a while. And, and how did we get here? Well, we had a great episode last time, just technical difficulties on that. Yeah, because we had, we had a guest. Lupo. We had a good old Mark Lupo Boom. in the house. Guy, guy's a genius. I'm telling you, he 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 thinks I'm blowing smoke up his ass sometimes. But I'm like, no, they do the rights really, really well. He thinks like not around the box, not over the box, not inside the box. He is the box. And oh uh, my gosh. And uh, what? Well, no, he's he, he comes all these great. He thinks he's the box. Ooh. The he's box the thinks he's the thought of the box. The box thinks he's Mark Lupo, or Lark. the Mark. It's Mark Lupo. <laughs> Lark Anyways, Mupo? we love. Did you, did you say Lark Mupo? Mark Box, what? Box, Box, Box. Now we love Mark Mupo. Lupo. Uh, he's got. We're gonna try to see how we can do it next time. We're have him in house or have him online. Uh, he couldn't make it because uh, of scheduling. But um, dude, he he way to bring it. Way to bring it home man, with these movies. They yeah. really like. Wow, they really like um, kicked my butt. I got a little emotional. Both of them. It was. I. I like. I said. I. I'm almost done watching Un- Uncut Gems. I'm at the very end. But um, I'll finish it, and then I, it's um, I I saw a good time. Like I I went through it, and God, uh, way to the Saudi brothers or Softy brothers. Sa- they, safety. Uh, safety. Sa- safety. 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 So, uh, the the Safety brothers, they freaking uh know how to bring a little adrenaline, man. Um, I'm gonna probably lean more on on good time because that one, the the uncut gems, I I liked it a lot. You know, it was Adam Sandler, so I was expecting a lot of the "What did he do? Look at me, I'm Adam Sandler." And we didn't get that, and I was upset. Not playing. I was expecting that at all. I heard so many good things about um, Uncut Gems that when I watched it, I was like, I was watching it, and I was like, "Holy crap, this is a little too uh, too close to home for me." I'm like, yeah. I've been in a lot, a lot of weird scenarios like this, and and I've you know I'm like a club kid, and and as I um as I watch it, like. I'm I'm more like with Uncut James. I see it as a movie. I saw like Adam Sandler going through a, a, a telling a story. That's what I saw, and he did a great a great performance. Like like Punch Drunk Love before, where you where we're like, what is he doing here? And it's like, no, he's acting. It was a great movie. Uh, he's acting. He's a hell of a performance. Um, but Good Time, it made me think about like me and what, what I've gone through because like they were trying to avoid jail this whole time, and they still get caught and they still get in trouble. No. So remember, everybody, there are spoilers, and we're going to alert you now. So if you don't want to uh, ruin these movies for yourself, recommend watching them. We recommend renting them, watching them where you can. But um, uh, this movies are going about to be wrecked here on this show because, as you might have already picked up, the butcher is back. The, the butcher. The butcher. I'm the I, butcher. I mean, 
you've already got two names, right? Robert Pattinson and Adam Sondler. Uh, Sondler. <laughs> Sondler. Uh, but yeah, man. No, this. Uh, both these movies, man. They. They just know how to keep you on edge without. I mean, they they know how to raise the stakes without. Yeah, that's you know, that's yeah. You know, it's it's a slow and steady, uh, fuckery, and it's it's hard to watch, but you don't want to look away. Um, and Uncut Gems is just like, oh man, like you're just like, are you kidding me, like? what what are you doing man like he just he's it's it's almost like he just can't stop himself he's just yeah so so entrenched in it like he just this is the life that he's living like and and you you almost wonder like is this just a day day in the life of you know is this happening on a on a fairly regular basis that he's pulling this kind of shit and it's just kind of working out is is it all because of the opal i mean is this does the opal have you know anything to do with it or his erratic behavior stuff like that yeah um you know because he was so obsessed with it and then they tell him it's not not worth what it was it's yeah. it's just um yeah it's it's very it's very interesting it's with both these movies you see see these characters get away with stuff that you don't expect them to get away with and then you see the consequences later. Yeah. And you aren't surprised of the consequences, but them actually getting away, like in good time, when he breaks that guy out of out of God, the hospital. God, that, that, that threw like, me off. I had to go back yeah. and like... And then, and then it's not his brother? Like, are you kidding me? Like... Well, though, it took me forever to realize. Once he started yeah. telling the story, I was like, oh my God, that is not his brother. I was like, why do you keep calling him bro? Yeah. But they keep calling him bro, and then, but they did a good job. I, I like the directing on that part where they read, they they made they you have you could pick up that he's not his. When I go back and watch this, I'm gonna pick up that it's not his brother. But like uh, we'll talk. We're, let me introduce these movies real quick. I wanna I like doing this. Oh. I'm, I'm bringing it back old school. Yeah. Uh, good. good time. We're talking about good time. 2017. Uh, rated R. One hour and 42 minutes. Uh, hold on. Let's do it. Let's do it. The just like this for a little bit. Yeah. There we go. Uh, after it's a crime drama thriller. After a botched bank robbery lands his younger brother in prison, Connie Nikas embarks on a twisted odyssey through New York City's underworld to get his brother Nick out of jail. Directors Benny Softy, uh, Josh Softy, writers Ronald Bronstein and uh, Josh Softy, Softy, I'll get I'll get it down. Uh, Robert Pattinson, uh, Benny Softy, and Jennifer Jennifer Lo uh, ah, Jennifer Jennifer Love Hewitt, Jennifer Jason Lee. Here's the butcher. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> and then we're putting up with a Uncut Gems 2019 rated R, uh, two hours, 15 minutes. Crime drama thriller with his debts mounting and uh, angry collectors closing in. A fast talking New York City jeweler risk everything in hope of staying afloat and alive. Directors uh, Benny and Josh Softy. Uh, writers uh, Ronald Bronston and Josh and Benny Softy. Stars Adam Sandler, Julia Fox and Edina Menzel. So Ben, now that we're back on the uh, old school style. What would you think about uh about these the comparisons of th this both say drama, they both say crime, and they say uh, thriller. Uh, actually, they say crime, crime, thriller. That order, did they hit the mark on all those? Yeah, I agree. Uh, definitely a thriller. Uh, on the sheer fact that it keeps you on edge and you don't really know what's going on. Uh, drama. Uh, with the drama, uh, with with good time, you know the family drama. Uh, actually, in both of them, family drama. Uh, yeah, and and then in uncut gems too. I mean, how how rich do you think his his wife's family is? Because I mean, he was able to drop how much one hundred ninety thousand, one hundred ninety thousand, yeah. you know, on this, and was able to buy it, and then he gave it back to him, you know. Yeah, like it's um, it's just interesting. To see, I, I I wonder wonder how he got to the point where he thought he could get away with all this stuff, you know? Like, is that his money? Is this just you know his wife's money, and he's making it work the best he can? You know? Yeah. Uh, you also see, you know, his influence on his sons, um, especially his you know middle son, who's yeah. pretty you know watching the game like he is, and just like, hey, are you watching this? You know, like pretty much acting like he does because that's what he sees. And then, you know, his daughter, it's almost like she just 
feels the same way as his mother does. Yeah, like, it's like it's the, yeah, the family thing. Yeah, and so, oh man, it just um, it just kind of tears you up, but you totally understand. I mean, he's in the city messing around with a with another girl and everything. Like you, you, it's it's so weird how you feel sorry for him, but you don't like it. You get pulled out of it. Like you start to feel feel sorry for him, and then you're like, oh wait. No, I can't. Like you're, you're just doing stuff that continues to hurt yourself. Like I, you know, it's is just, that what uh, they call keeping up with the Joneses? What's what do you mean? Like he's trying to keep up. Like he, he, he I mean, I don't know how he got to that lifestyle. But... No, no, he's he's just a a compulsive gambler. He oh, gambled, so he's a... he, yeah, I don't I don't think it's any kind of. Uh, I think it maybe one point it was that status, um, but. It's it's past that at this point, you know. He's he already he already feels like he has that status, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That. Uh, but. Uh, so he because he 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 doesn't like you don't I don't see his his uh, you don't see um his reaction till like Howard you don't see Howard react till what do you call it till he like he attacks the weekend I thought that was funny I was like oh my god even just like yeah attacking the weekend I thought that was funny man. And uh, he's, he he's plays himself in the weekends himself, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and it's like it's kind of cool. Like he's like, I'm not getting on stage, so there's fucking neon lights on, like you know, like being a prima donna. But it's kind of like, I'm like, well, he's being himself in the movie, you know. Yeah. And uh, but you see, you see, you see, uh, you see that, and that's like the only really time because the other times, like he's angry, and that dude, that sucks, man. What's his name? Because we got a, we got ourselves a <laughs> repeat offender from Get Out. Uh, oh on, yeah. Uh... Is it Lakeith Stanfield? I, I forgot his name already. Sorry. Uh, let's make sure he's in here, man. You know. Yeah, What's I think it's Lakeith. Lakeith. Yeah, Lakeith Stanfield. Yes, the the Manny, and um, yeah. man, that's I hate those characters. I hate those people, man. I hate the the Manny characters in life. I grew up around a lot of those motherfuckers. And sorry, I'm getting emotional. This, this is going to be an emotional uh, episode for me, man. Give me a heads up. Like I said, it's just, I, no, this is like very very true. A lot of things I'm about to say, and I mean not just true, but like uh, experience that I've gone through. And then um, seeing like uh, just growing up as an adult and being like people can like I don't know make different decisions and whatever. But I just don't like I don't, I, there's those people that like uh, try to make it. But they want to look cool while they're doing it. The fake it till you make it people. There's tons of those people, and um, they're not willing to put their balls in the fryer to freaking to to show off. You know, to not show off to like make it. You know, they don't. They're not willing to sacrifice, but they want to act like they are. And those kind of characters like always get into trouble, or they're always like they're like the the side guy. You know, mm. they're just like because you see what he's doing. You see you you know what his got his gimmick is right. Yeah, he's just kind of riding on the coat till like he's getting people in for um, Howard. He's, yeah, he's bringing in that clientele for Howard. That's his job. His job is to to he yeah. gets a percentage, you know. Like he's like a he's like a sales mm-hmm. a sales rep. So yep. so and that's why I'm like that's why it's just kind of those, those things, man. But um, yeah, the 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 drama in Uncut Jim, like it's pretty it's pretty like the way they shot it, the way they t- like these movies are shot completely different too. That's what I like. I couldn't even tell they're made by the same same brothers, and um, but even like Adam Sandler is just what he's just an actor in this one, right? What's he's that? Not, he's not like a he's not he's not like a writer or director or anything, right? He's just an actor. No, I don't think so. Uh, at most, he may have been like a producer on it, but no, he wouldn't. Yeah, be. so can you get is this is this is uh, yeah, you're right. This is some world that this Howard character created that they just they were able to capture things. They were able to they were able to really show off like oh look at this this is the uh, this is the um, what do you call it? The way that this guy lives his life, and look at the way that 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 he gets around the, his days, and it's insane, man. Like, um, and that's what I'm saying. Just the fact that, like, when you're dealing with people and and you're dealing with like hustlers and shit, because I I'm I'll say it on the air. I'm a hustler, uh, I'm the, uh, but I I'm more of a hustler, not a hustler. Uh, more of just like actually, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll grind for the for the loose ball. But uh, what I'm trying to say is like, and that's another thing. This is there's still basketball involved in this because Adam Sandler loves basketball. Yep. So like that's pretty cool, but um, you know it's just maybe I'm being a little too emotional, but I think there's a lot of mental health in this movie, big time. Um, that that what Adam Sandler is showing, I guess, or an addict, an addict, well, you know, compulsive uh, gambler. Um, and he, I mean, that that God, that pissed me off when they they. I mean, yes, he's making bets with other people's money, but when he hit. He would have been out of, like, you know, but that's not the point of the movie. The movie's to to get to the drama, to get through the, uh, to get to that part where we where we where we where we hold our like. This is a nail biter, man. It's, did it's did the ending did the ending surprise you? Of Uncut Gems? Yeah. 
I haven't finished watching it. I just, but I just read, I just read what I, what I said. So can I, let me hear you. Let me tell you what I read real quick. Okay. Um, on, on, <laughs> I ruined it for myself, uh, but that's why I want to, I kind of want to beat up. It says something here about, um, let's see. Cause I got to the part where they did the auction. I got to the part. I didn't get to the end. So it says Garnett's Boston Celtics win the game, earning Howard 1.2 million ecstatic. He frees the three thugs, but enraged Phil shoots Howard. Oh, so he dies. Yeah. Howard in the face, killing him instantly. Arno, Arno uh, protests before attempting to escape, leading Phil to shoot him dead as well. Julia leaves the casino with Howard's winnings, and Phil and Nico loot to the store. Mm. It's fucked up, but that's life, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just... Um, yeah. It, the That that whole whole scene is so intense because he's watching the game as he has them. You know... You know how earlier in the movie his uh, his doors are having trouble working. Yeah, yeah. So they get locked in there, and he's like, "You're not leaving. Like, go ahead and shoot it. Like, it's bulletproof. All this other stuff." And um, he he has him just sit there and watch the game. And uh, you know, like you said, Julia Fox is in the casino watching it, and then she sees some other. Uh, she sees some of Arno's guys, and so she goes and goes up to the suite of this guy that she met whenever she was getting there in the casino. Well, actually, <laughs> she met in a helicopter that uh, Howard had rented for her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. It's a, it's a very, very intense scene, and I like whenever I was watching it because I was I, – I, I think I was watching it on my lunch break or something. I was trying to hurry through it, and I kind of fast-forwarded a little bit, and I was like, oh, no. Like I just, I just ended up sitting there and watching it all the way through. Um, but it's it's just the the tension man and then you're just like oh wow he he gets it you know he's he's won like you you finally see him win after he loses this entire movie like it's yeah. just one one continuous screw up after another sometimes his fault sometimes not and you you see him finally win he lets him out and literally the first thing he does is pull out the gun and shoot him right in the face like right, right above. See, uh, in in the poster right here where he's holding his cheek, that's yeah. where he gets shot. Um. Oh, so he like just like so he wins and then shoots him. Yeah, yeah, no, no. He he. Um, Howard Howard wins. He's like, all right, we got one point two million dollars. You know, I got. I'm gonna pay all your debts, all this other stuff. And I guess Arno has like paid this other that other guy Phil to be his protection, or he's involved with some kind of nefarious acts or something of the sort I'm, I'm not too sure what his deal is but um yeah man he he it's him his partner and arno that are caught in that little container and yeah. as soon as as soon as howard lets him out yeah he shoots him right in the face no questions nothing oh uh, and yeah, it's, it's a build-up because it, he bit him yeah. in the arm it's a build-up yeah well and and he, he just he was just like stuck in there this whole time and it's just like oh wow like you just you you were just over you, like I said. You you see him screw up the entire time. You want to feel sorry for him, but you see him doing all this stupid stuff, and then you finally see him win, and you're like, "Oh wow, finally finally get a win, Howard. Good job." And then dead, Arno dead, and it's just like, "Wow, that sh that took a turn, took a turn for the worst," you know. And but it's it's completely plausible. Like once you think on it, like in the moment, it's just so like you just are taken aback. But I mean, hell, you gotta imagine you're dealing with thugs, and you just had them locked in in yeah. this container for hours. Yeah, they're not; they don't give a damn about that money. They can literally, they like you said, they loot the entire place. They take all of his stuff. So wait, so why does Arnold gets killed? Because he was telling them not to kill him, or he was like, "Why did you kill him?" Like they, he was essentially trying to, you know, stand up to these guys, and they shot him. Oh, uh, okay. So they 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 the they sent they they uh, the hand that fed them they bit it. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, I like I said I I think that Arno just hires these guys, you know, close maybe not close to the beginning of the movie. Oh, it doesn't matter. They they're, they're, you they know, aren't loyal. Money. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, All right. So they killed them. So then Phil and the other guy loot the place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's you what might, I was missing. You might hold it yeah, down for it. a second. I hold it down. I got this. We're going old school. So I um I didn't like I said it's just kind of filling me in. I'm sorry that you guys have to go through that. This is not really what that kind of show is like. But I, uh, I don't know, he just kind of explained it to me and because uh, I just read the thing and he's building up to me and I'm like, oh, cool. So sorry if we had to, if we got through that part, but let's go through some of the trivia. 
Yeah, actually, uh, let's see. The film was inspired by the... Oh, come on. Get out of here. Sorry. Something pop up. The film was inspired by the Saudi brothers' father's time working as a salesman runner for a man also named Howard in the Manhattan Diamond District. The Softy brothers and their father are also Jewish and avo- uh, avid basketball fans. So just kind of goes hand to hand. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tilda Swinton doesn't appear on screen, but the voice of the auctioneer that Howie argues with over the phone. Adam Sandler uh, wore false teeth and a fake dark mole on his uh, right cheek for the role. All right, Adam. The Softy brothers were so intense of shooting on 35 uh, millimeter film that they actually took a pay cut. Oh wow, that's what I that's what I need to do. It was Julia's idea for uh, not take a pay cut shooting 35 millimeters. It was Julia's idea for her character to have Har- ha- uh, Howard's ta- name tattooed on her ass. Oh wow, Julia Fox. I'm not too familiar with her. Where is she from? No sudden move from 2021. Day by Day, 2020, and Puppet, 2022. Let's see. Uh, not, not a whole lot of information on her. She's getting started. Hey, she's kind of been getting started since 2018. Probably started probably around 2013 or something. That's cool, though. I'm, I'm, uh, I just started my acting career again, so let's see how this goes. I did uh, I did audition for a role, and I did not get it. It was uh, the theater, but I like it. I, I understand. I, I like uh some people will laugh or they get sad at failure. I, I laugh at myself because that's what I need to do. Fail sometimes to get better. Well, you I just think, get right back up on that horse, you know? Yeah. And you know, and you know what's crazy too is um, the thing about it is we're watching, we're watching this movie from the outside. So he, Howard doesn't know what's going on. You know what I mean? Like Howard doesn't know that, that he's going through this. Um, I like this. Like they, I just read that they shot this movie on thirty-five uh, millimeters, which is fucking awesome. I, I want to go back. I want to hire a crew that does thirty-five millimeter. Um, that's badass. Let's see. Also, um, what was I saying? There's just like he. We don't know. He doesn't know his, what's going on. Like he, he's just living his life. And some people, I, you know, trauma and, and mindset, and uh, there's reasons why. Like I was, you know, listening to a podcast and they were saying something about like. Um, like how you can get like I, well, I don't know if it was a podcast I was listening to, but there I was I forgot what story I was listening to on YouTube, and it was just kind of like um, imagine getting your brain like your mind stuck and you're 13, and you never so then you're like, like 43 and you think you're 13 because you just didn't want to go beyond that, and it's not really like your choice. Let's say like your parents divorced or you lost a, a parent or something happened to you traumatic. You know, let's say you're and let's say you were or you have an old parent. Let's say your dad's like 60 when you're born. You know. Mm-hmm. Like and that's true because my dad was my dad was sixty my grandpa was sixty two and my dad was born so you know there's a fact right there, but let's you know it's like like how are you like able to have a connection to this world when the people that are supposed to be around you aren't around you or supposed to show you but I don't know man it's like it's weird growing up as a father man it's like it's it's fucking intense dude like I'm cussing right now but I can't cuss around because but also I can't cuss around him because now he tells me those are bad words and I don't even use bad words I can't even I can't just show, use a word that does like an emphasis like uh you know. <laughs> Hey, wait, hold on. Explain this. Why is uh, Arno and Adam Sandler at the same table? Uh, Arno is his, um, I think, brother-in-law. Oh, so this yeah. is, okay. Okay. But he's, I don't believe he's Jewish. I, it, that's, that, cause that's, oh, he, he married into because, it. Because uh, Judd Hirsch, his character, Gooey, like, that's why he's like, oh, this outsider. You know, like, or maybe he converted. I don't know. But, um you know that's that's the connection there and that's why arno isn't like wanting to have him killed you know it's family oh my um, god that's true so that's why so that oh well that's why that fucking phil had to kill arno yeah cuz he killed both of them yeah but so, see, that, then, that, you you know what's crazy about movies that in like this too is like you get to thinking about like the aftermath you know like uh, yeah. what's what's going to happen now, and yeah, because you, you got to see the inside of his family. You're right, dude. You got yeah. to see like his his life. So, so really, you really start thinking about his kids and how he did have a connection with one of his children, mm-hmm. but it was the one that like that was like him. Yeah. So, and he was like, "Look, I'm selling this and the I'm selling this for the pop store." Or he's like, he's doing sales as a high school kid. My brother, we did that one time. My brother, I bought him a bunch of those uh, chocolate bars, those expensive ones. And he was flipping them. He was selling them. I bought them for five. He was selling them for ten. He gave me no cutback. But it's okay. <laughs> I was letting him, let him, let him try hustling. Because I was in the, the business club when I was a kid. Business. 
I was in business at a really, really, really young age, but I didn't care. See, I'm not thinking I'm not material. I'm not materialistic. I don't care about items, but I see the way other people care about items and the value that they put into things. And I like I like to learn quality and I like to learn things. So learn about things and research. So that way, uh, you know, you know what you're getting. Exactly. Yeah. But research. it's like dealing. It's like, you know what you're getting. It just sucks, man. It's just sometimes some people, they come off as being shady and they're not. And then some people come off as being a nice guy and they're not. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like it's, it, it's hard to tell, but all you gotta do is just, is just kind of like be social, I guess a little bit, not too much. Keep your circles small, you know, it's just, it sucks. I just think that's just weird nowadays. We live in a society where people just talk about each other and they talk bad about each other real bad. And now the internet's there. Wait a minute. Is what? that fucking, is, I'm sorry, I mean to cuss, but is that, is the dad? Oh, he is. Judd Hirsch, you're right. You did say that. Yeah. He's in this movie. Oh my God, this movie just gets better and better. Right. Sorry, like I'm so, you, as you can tell, I'm watching it as we're doing it. I'm not supposed to do this anymore, but I, um, <laughs> yeah. I you know, it's it happens. Good, no. I'm a, I, I, was, I, was, I was explaining to everybody earlier, but they know the show. Um, and I'm a little busy. I hate using that excuse, but I'm a little busy. Right. Uh, but this, I, this movie is like amazing. Like, um, you know, the KG factor and the fact that it's 2012, actually pretty cool too. They're taking real stats from like that time. Mm-hmm. Well, and you can also and it, play that, you know, because you know the outcome of that. Year. Oh, you know the outcome. Everything you know, is possible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, KG, uh, man, he's crazy. That, guy, that dude's crazy. You know what? Uh, and, 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 and an NBA on the court, crazy. Not, I don't know, real life. Um, but what do you call it? I like the way he's ta- he talks to this is a podcast, and he talks about who's the, the, the most illest uh, trash talker, KG. And he's like, man, Timmy D. Oh, he talk. He talk. No, we know he talk. No, he wouldn't talk. He wouldn't talk um, bad to you. He would just talk like he'd say something like, "Okay, good, got you." There we go. He got these one word liners. He just he can't break you. You don't. You can't break him. He stays the same. He's still putting up fifty five, ten, and ten. It's like, it's like he's like. But it's, I was like, yes, yeah, my boy Timmy D. We all know Derek Robinson's my favorite basketball player. Then it's Tim Duncan, <laughs> and then it's D Wade. Kind of rolls in that order like that. I like point guards though. Point guards are like my my, uh, my my pride and joy. Like I do like Mark Jackson. I got that Mark Jackson trading card. I do like um, what do you call it? Uh, John Stockton was was I like I enjoyed watching him. I like Gary Payton. I learned how to play defense with the, with the glove. He called me the glove. And then he fight, he talked a lot of crap, man. He talked a lot of crap on the court. And he, but he also played with Sean Kemp, which is the Rain Man, who was a, a freaking powerhouse, which shot, used to dunk the ball all the time, and like from anywhere, like literally anywhere. And he was out of high school. And then they had a Detlef Shrimp this uh, German who was a, uh, like a six ten mm-hmm. specialist because back then six ten guys didn't shoot three pointers just they're in the paint and he was a in and out guy. So I like, I like when you only see one of those guys on the court or two on a team, not like all of them, but it's okay. It's today's NBA. I'm just accepting it. And if I got to watch it to like understand it and I feel like that's the only, only one of few things I could talk with my dad still. So might as well watch what my dad likes. I guess I can still communicate with him because he tried to talk to me about the, the the game the other day and i was like dad i don't i don't want to watch the nba man it's kind of it's garbage to me man this is garbage i was like can't do it enough garbage yeah but i'm like i don't want to i don't really want to want to watch uh nba but i just i don't i don't don't know i just don't care for it anymore uh but i'm also like but i'm putting that attention that i was putting into nba i'm putting into my movies now and i i i I have to i can't be you can't be like just watching games all day like i used to man i used to like love waking up when i was a kid i'd I'd wake up on sunday saturday mornings too but sunday mornings like yeah, I'll just watch basketball. I came with like three hours, three games, and sometimes you get lucky and you get that fourth game. Mm-hmm. So you go boom, 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 watch NBA all morning, dude. It was it was fun. <laughs> and then by noon, that's like that started that started early by noon or like two is over, and you go shoot hoops for like five hours. And that was fun. <laughs> Good old Saturday mornings. But yeah, oh, man, yeah, um, I'm telling you, you could talk about basketball all day, and I could tell you. Uh, that I know who Michael Jordan is. He was in Space Jam. Yeah. Um, uh, Dirk Nowitzki. Uh, he played for the Mavericks. He's, he's from Dallas. Yeah, he's in Dallas. Yeah. And uh, like you said, Tim Duncan. He played for the Mavericks too, didn't he? The the the, the Dallas Cowboys. No, the uh, San Antonio Spurs. Spurs. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I just I just I can't go too deep into like if why CJ doesn't want to watch it anymore really because then it gets all conspiracy theory. So yeah. I just don't want to go that. I don't no, want to go I that. just, I, I think those are the three people I know. Uh, Kobe Bryant, you know, obviously. Oh, yeah, okay. Nah, man. Jelly uh, Bean. I'm, 
yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not too big into the the sporty sports. Uh, <laughs> I I just I don't know, man. I've never been able to just like really root for a team. I don't know. I've never I've never been like real competitive. Like, oh man, I really want them to win. I don't know. We should just, we should join a, we should side by side to so join a kickball league. Kickball, no, uh, yeah, dodgeball. We, kick, touch, duck, 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 dive, dodge, duck, D- dick, dodge. And then he brings it back up again, huh? <laughs> it's like so you said dodge twice. Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I think I, I honestly, yeah. Right now I'm like relaxing more because this is this is a um, a rough m- movie to watch, man. Especially Adam Sandler, like he's like one of your like childhood or from my from my my words uh, his my childhood like uh, just a like comedy guy com- comedian and then like wa- watching all his movies and then watching him on SNL and then not knowing he's like his stand up and then as you get older I start watching all a lot of his stand up and I was like holy shit he's a comic man like this this guy's like everything and I guess if you want to talk about inspiration yeah like I like I'm doing stand up now and dude I'm going to theater and I'm I'm doing movies right now on my own and writing I'm like dude he, I got I got to be like an Adam Sandler and uh, if that's what it's going to take, that's what it's going to take. Because um, I've take me. i been on the sideline too long learning and trying to be like, I was Aaron Rodgering this shit. <laughs> it's been even he got, he, he, even Brett Favre kind of moved out of the way for him. So, you know, I'm like, I'm just time for me to like get up. Uh, oh, that's another, sorry, it's a sports analogy. The guy, uh, Aaron Rodgers, plays for the Green Bay Packers. And uh, there was this guy named Brett Favre uh, who played for like 19 years. And I think he played 17 for like I know the Green fo- Bay Packers. I know, foot- I know footy ball a little bit better. Okay. So um, when they draft, they, the, the Iron Man, Brett Favre, was like, I got a couple more years left in me. And they were like, uh, no, nah, I don't think so. Um, we're going to draft this kid. He's pretty good. He's out of uh, Cal. His name is uh, Aaron Rodgers. And uh, we're going to let him, we're going to let him, you're uh, going to teach him. And then he was like, hell, hell, I ain't, I ain't no coach. So <laughs> he just kind of like, he just, he didn't, uh, what do you call it? He didn't uh, like help Aaron Rodgers. I, I don't know. I mean, what my from what, from what I know of, what I what we can tell on our on what I picked was I would what I was able to gather from Brett Favre was that he wasn't helping him out. So here's good old Brett Favre, and um, he uh, let's see how many years did he play in the NFL NBA? He yeah, played. Yeah, I think it was close to 19. Was it? Uh, he went in in 1991. And he got out in 2010. So that was what. Damn, has it been that long since yeah. Far retired? Nineteen years, dude. Wow. And tw- oh wow, it has been twelve years. Wow. <laughs> and he can still probably play right now. Yeah. Um, he all disease. Fifty-two, six foot two, two hundred and twenty pounds. Go to Wikipedia here. He is a Super Bowl champion from XXX one XXXI from Super Bowl thirty one. Um, he is a three time NFL Most Valuable Player, nineteen ninety five to nineteen ninety seven. He is an NFL Player of the Year, 1995, three-time first-team All-Pro. Damn, this guy really played. 11-time Pro Bowler, and up even until even his last three years, 2007, 2008, 2009. So when he played with the Jets and the Minnesota Vikings, he did win me money. Talking about gambling, he did win me money. Brett Favre won me money when he was with the Jets. I don't. And he almost won me my fantasy football league, but he crapped out at the end of the season. I didn't have a, a decent quarterback, so I lost. But I won some money. I got like third place. Um, look at this, 71,838 uh, yards passing, 86% passer rating. So that means if he throws 10 balls, almost nine of them are going to get caught. Oh, damn. Just because of his, just because of his throw. Damn, Brett Favre, use the man, Brett. <laughs> Let me see. You know what? Let's look up KG real quick. Let's look up the, uh, the powerhouse that was KG. And let's see what... Um, what his stats were. Where was I? I was somewhere here. Let me see. But yeah, but, no, the the basketball in this movie, that's that's what kind of uh pushes it along too, is that whole Kevin Garnett um aspect of it too. You know, cause, like if cause uh, it's, a, it's a celebrity, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Well and you know, he he's and he's playing with him too with the opal, like no. I'm not gonna sell that opal for anything less than this. Like it's worth millions of dollars. And then he's like, "Well, come to the auction." Like it's just, it's uh, Adam Sandler's character is just so wishy-washy. You know, he's uh, you just never know what's what's real with him. Kevin Garnett's 46 years old, six foot eleven inches, 240 yeah. pounds. Damn. First round pick, fifth uh, fifth pick overall. In the first round, that's good. He's out of high school too, man. 
He was in 1995 to 2007 with the Minnesota uh, uh, Timberwolves. Then he was with the Celtics and that atrocious Boston's team. And then he went back to finish up in, in Minnesota. I still thought he could play, but I think he got tired of um, got tired of the Millennials. I think he was like, man, y'all, y'all is too weak. I think that's what he. I think that's probably. I think honestly, think AG could have could have played to like 2020. I could have he could have helped the 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 Minnesota Timberwolves kind of like kind of coach him a little bit and play player coach thing. But uh, he should have so done. He could have been a player coach. So that's kind of cool. He was already retired whenever he did this movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He retired. That's, uh, that's what I'm saying. Went back to 2012, so they went back yeah. to his time. Yeah. But he still looks the same. KG that ain't aged since he was in high school. Yeah, uh, oh, that's that's, I, that's really kind of cool, you know, to go back and be like, I was, you know, getting that mindset of playing the game and getting. Oh man, he. I, I feel like Kevin Garnett did a great job of acting, you know, uh, and just not not putting up with the bullshit. Is that have, he's, you know, sorry, I was I'm sorry. That, what you? I'm sorry, he's not putting oh, up with no, the bullshit. Just, yeah, I mean, he has his bodyguards and everything like that. I mean, it's it's just interesting to see. You know, kind of all the different aspects of celebrity from the outside. You know, kind of like Howard has like a like an outside view, and we yeah. kind of get grasp that. Like, oh wow, you're you're so close to the weekend. Whenever the weekend was, you know, not as popular as he is now, and not as you know, everybody knows who he is now after what Fifty Shades of Grey or something like that. Was and he then, in that? Uh, uh, he was. This is a song of his, I think. That was, oh, that's uh, right. That's right. So I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. that one, I like the weekend. I like him. Yeah, but uh, um, no, it's just it's a it's a very interesting look in into somebody who's who has kind of like a warped ego about themselves. You know, like Howard, the way Howard views himself, I mean, he's not he doesn't see himself as being messed up at all. Like that's I mean, what I'm he saying. Breaks, that's, that's... He breaks down to Julia Fox, but then he just continues to do stupid shit. Like he it's, he has no remorse for it. He can sit there and be sorry and and break down and all that whenever it gets too overwhelming. But it it doesn't change Howard. But that's that's what that's the that's the mental health uh, aspect of it, dude. Like it's not it's not really it's a, it's not really impulsive. I mean, if it's impulsive, whatever. But it's it's what he's going through. He's um he's he's it, he it's not an issue for him. It's for people around him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that it's like, that scene and, that scene too with his wife. You know, like whenever she's like, I I hate you. Like you disgust yeah. me. Like all this other stuff. It was very. Oh man. So check this out. KG actually has a credit for a movie. He was in the movie Blue Chips in 1994. He plays like a high school kid. Uh, he's a, he's got a he got like a one um one little scene where he like dunks on something, but like yeah he's you know, it's like so it's Shaq's in this movie, Nick Nolte, Mary McDonald, and Shaq, <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal, hey, can you do it? Um yeah so it's in this movie it's pretty cool. It, did it get a nomination? Well for what? What? They better not get a Razzie. You better not get a Razzie. They did get a Razzie. Oh God, Shaq. I'm sorry. What what what, uh, what movie was it? Blue Rebound? Chips. Oh, Blue Chips. A nominee, Razzie Award, worst act, worst new star, Shaquille O'Neal. Don't be hating on him. Uh, but yeah. to take this out, Kevin. Ed, Ed O'Neal was in it too. <laughs> oh, that's true. Um, what do you call it? The Kevin Garnett's jersey hasn't been retired in Minnesota yet. It has been retired in Boston though. Number five retired by Boston Celtics. Hmm. Wow. But um, but what was I gonna say also about that? So KG having an entourage like that, and and this is because it's you know New York is very, I guess very diverse, and I would live in a or you know Austin's and Dallas are starting to get a little bit more diverse in cultures and and uh, ethnicities. But do you think KG? Why does he have people around him? Is it because he's a superstar, or I know he has a lot of money, but is it because he needs protection like that, or is it is it because he's like um, maybe his culture, or why does he need like thirty? Like bodyguard around him because he just wants to try to yeah i mean you got to think too i mean he's in the finals right now so this is a high stakes time for him uh you you have i mean just the first thing that comes to my mind is um what was it celtic pride movie yeah. with uh dan oh Aykroyd. hell yeah da- dan Aykroyd, so, uh, daniel stern know, and damon wayans yeah i mean you know not to say that that could happen but i would imagine having bodyguards that's a good 
great you know, callback man that's a great callback yeah so i i you know just that um uh, oh and adam sandler actually is going to have a new movie out uh it's coming wednesday it's called hustle uh where he's going to be doing some more basketball stuff um it's a dramedy so it's on netflix i just saw that pop up well so. i was talking i was talking about hustling earlier so let's see what sandler can we'll, show me we'll we'll see what we could do uh but no uh that that would be my my first guess i mean and not he he would be he is a celebrity you know in that aspect too i imagine you have a lot of people coming up to you but especially in new york and you're a boston celtics player That's like true. you would also want to have protection you know I, you know what you're, you're right dude because i don't think like i and then you know i have mental i, I struggle with mental health so i'm like i never want to hurt anybody so i just you know stay away from people but i, I don't think about those other people that they don't they're not aware of it and they're really like, oh, he's right there. I need to win this game. I need to win this game. Oh, he's yeah. right there. I just need to let me just detain him. Let me let me get him sick. Let me do something. Let me um, let me piss God, him off. God yeah, like bid that Howard what? was betting against Kevin Garnett, what he would have done. You know, yeah. this is to me. It's like it really is just like why this is hard. This movie was really hard for me to watch, man. It's not as bad as as a good time. That was yeah, not a good time for me. Let's let's uh, go let's go over to good time. Let's, oh yeah, uh, we're already at forty minutes. Over. Dang, we yeah. should switch over. But I mean, just from just from watching, I mean, yeah, dude, this has been a great like breakdown. Um, I did want to show real quick. You did bring up, you did bring up uh, a movie right now. You said good. I said good callback. This is the movie Ben is talking about, Celtic Pride. Uh, Celtic Pride, nineteen ninety six, PG thirteen, one hour and thirty one minutes, comedy sport. Two over loyal Celtic fans kidnap their opponent's star player in order to guarantee their team the championship. Wow, look at this. Uh, director Tom De De Sergio, writers Judd Apatow, <laughs> stories ah. by Judd Apatow. <laughs> Whoa! Colin, and, and then Colin Quinn, he's like a Boston guy. It's perfect. That's stars, crazy. That's so stars. Funny. That is cool. Stars Damon Wins, Daniel Stern, Dan Aykroyd. This is a great movie. I love this movie. Me too. It's like this is almost like Sal Saving Silverman style movie. Yeah. Kidnapping. Well, and and I just kind of stumbled upon it. You know, one day, whenever Stars was playing just movies or maybe HBO, whichever one. Uh, but, you know, you Celtic Pride just starts playing or you catch it halfway through and you're like, what's going on here? Oh, especially with Dan Aykroyd and, you know, uh, oh, shit. Daniel Stern? What? Daniel Stern, yes. Uh, I was about to say Howard. I was like, that's not right. Um, but, yeah, man. And then Damon Wayans, too. I mean, that's it's a great combo. Uh, that movie is fantastic. It's been a minute since I've seen it, but I do I do remember watching that. Yeah, I might watch, I might have to watch it soon. I'll, I'll watch it during the finals right now because the finals are going on. I just I just ah uh, NBA is just are. Anyways, let's move on to good time, man. Like good time. All right, so this one's gonna be a little bit emotional for good old CJ. So I'm gonna be uh I'm gonna be doing a lot of in and outs. Okay. But um, man, it's hard because think about it. Like it's it's mental health movie um that it has a um a special needs a brother. Mm -hmm. brothers and that they're they're just troubled man they're just they're, they're to me it's just like trying to survive god I, like i am falling in love with robert pattinson's acting oh, and yeah. uh my without a doubt dude, my, my cousin my, my cousin's always pretty it's pretty accurate on certain things but he was he had told me he's like even during twilight he was like hey you gotta check out this guy pattinson man he's pretty good um at acting and i was like all right i'll check him out and he wasn't lying man like robert pattinson's like he's really 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 good um but to like to the point where I'm like I don't even I I, I he, he helped like he helps me escape into that character, and you know what messed me up about that part where he, we you, you forget he goes I I kidnapped the wrong guy and I was like oh that's cool they seems to his brother like that and I, his brother can't recognize him because he has his hair blonde <laughs> that's what came to my head yeah um, that's what I was thinking too I was like he doesn't recognize him yeah you know but uh but but check this out there's a um there's a uh, let me look for it real quick there's a Batman. Uh, Wolverine reference. Uh, have you seen this one? This meme? I don't think so. It's his, yeah, check it out. It's right here. This is cracks me up, dude. This is the, this meme, like, if you, I'm a, touchy, this is the nerd in me just cracking up. Check it out. You see it right here? Uh, I don't see it. Sorry, on Twitter. It gives us the person's, nah, sorry, I messed up. Where am I at? All these freaking, oh, what I do? Here we go. You see this? You see it right here? It says, um, well, it says girls in 2008 and then guys in 2022. Like, no, I, I don't, I don't see anything. You don't see anything? Uh-uh. Oh, sorry. Oh man, ah, I've been, okay. I've been showing everything off and that thing's been up the whole time. I'm going to have to go oh, backwards. Oh dude, my bad. I didn't, I didn't even. That's <laughs> my, my fault. You know what? Let's just do this. There we go. That's my fault. I didn't know it did uh, that. So I'm going to have to go back to Celtic pride in a little bit. But anyways, so, uh, do you see this beam right here? The, 
the it says like it says mujeres and hombres or whatever uh -huh. who who head of is head is uh -huh. it's like girls in 2008 and then guys in 2022 <laughs> <laughs> that's you know great. that's funny man like it cracks me up it's like oh my god this <laughs> so real quick i, I want to go back to the the screen share for celtic pride do i still have it up I do not. Let me see. I just, I, cause that's a, that's a funny movie. It looks like the, I, I think, I think it. I, I like the poster if it's the same one I'm thinking. Of. Yeah, I like. Where I like, it's like those two, and then Damon Wayne's in the middle. Yeah, it's the. Here we go. Yeah. Wow, this thing goes. Yeah. This thing goes, yeah, I like that. That one cracks me up, man. That's like this movie. This movie's so funny. Like it's just, but it's cause it, it is kind of like as an adult and as a guy that was a big sports fan as a kid. And the Jed Apatow wrote this movie. You know, it's funny, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it's good. But uh, but but on good time, here let me do the backwards. On good time, um, wow, the brother love. Like I love my brothers. I love my 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 girls. I love my sisters. Call my girls. Um, you know, family members. I love my stepsisters too. You know, it's like everybody. You, you carry your your family, and it's just it's kind of like these guys are from the streets, man. That's all they're raised. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know any better. Um, he's trying to make it. Like, trying to make it, dude. And then you just see Robert Pattinson like acting, just see it, like he's, like he's cunning. I really got. I got. There's so many things that's fucked up. That God, it, like I've seen, like I've been in scenarios like that where people do like where they like, they can't think. And I'm like, hey, stop. You need to relax. And, and then they're like, oh no, 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 no. And then they start like making a mess or start like pulling a knife out. They're like, I gotta protect myself. And like, are you seriously getting a knife? Who the fuck? Are you? Why are you gonna stab somebody? Get the fuck. Get get your shit together. You know, it's like. And I've done that too, but not with a knife. I've done it where I've gotten like I freaked out. I was like, "Oh shit, I'm in a crack house! I get the fuck out of here. The cops are gonna show up." And they're like, "Chill out, dude. Don't call it a crack house." He said that out loud. I go, "Oh my god, I'm talking out loud. See, I need to get the fuck <laughs> out of here. Like, oh, I don't feel comfortable in here. I'm nervous." And then I talk a lot when I'm nervous. And they're like, um, "And I, uh, I, uh, what do you call it? I don't know. Just the, 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 a lot of the scenes, but the one scene that really, the, I, I, did you cringe when he was uh, when he kissed the, the, the girl?" Yeah, no, that, 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 cringe, whole, that whole scene where they were, you know, together was just, uh, it was like, thank goodness that that other guy started, like, just, ah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was weird. And, and then, like, how old are you? 16. And then he just goes and does that. It's just like, oh. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's kind of, and then the thing is, like, I, and I'm not saying that, you know, 18 makes her a different person. What I'm saying is in society, um what do you call it it's a you know it's adults an 18 year old uh, girls that are like 15 they 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 on the internet the parents give them the phone and give them the site the sw switches and everything and and uh, the, those those kids with them you know they know they know internet man they they, they know what to do they like they're what i'm not trying to say is i'm not trying to defend them and what i'm trying to say is like like uh, there's a reason why there's like an uh, 18 year old limit man there's a yeah. statue because the mind of, a, of of anything other than that can't really that they can be held accountable but there is there need guidance you still need help and you don't want a bunch of dudes that are like so this is what i was saying earlier like what if you had like a like a, a guy that's like has a has, has a 55 year old man has a has a child with a uh, with a 30 year old woman that kid that, that let's say that man passes away at 75 that kid is 20 years old he's still not even grown not fully grown yet and he inherits his dad's millions so now he has all this money he doesn't want to lose and he's freaking out because he doesn't want to work and he doesn't want to do a thing. So he becomes a conservative. Now I'm playing. Um, but like this in this story. But what I'm saying is, but that's that's like and that's what happens. A lot of people get stuck in the streets, or that's why I see homeless people. I feel like I feel like you know, like some there's scenarios like that, or people that I know. And um, it's like even like when when Connie, Connie comes in and like right away you get introduced to him. He's just like a piece of shit. It's like you tear it up, get that up. Like he's not helping his brother, but he doesn't know any better. Like yeah. what you can't you you gotta look at the character. You don't look at it like it doesn't look like Robert Pattinson to me. It's like this guy Connie, and I'm yeah. like this guy, and I, I know people like that. They're just trying to make it, man, and they just don't get like you know. He's not even like a hustler in this movie. He's just trying to survive. He literally, they're literally just trying to rob a bank. Yeah. And and I just don't know. I, they're not that bright, you know. And then he's sharp. He's he uses. He's like he's showing you survival skills. He's using his. He's showing you like the things that he does to um to get by. You see all the love he has for his brother. It's it's fucked up, man. Like, you know, like I never I didn't realize like that like well I've, being from a big family people don't really make fun of uh, my brother or anything because you know you get beat up you make fun of a gay kid on the border like the family will find out and beat you up so he didn't really like uh, he didn't really get made fun of a lot so um but like you know growing up like that having a brother having a brother not special needs or anything just we're both different him and i you know, being an artist and him being like that like it's it's like we're just normal we're trying to be normal but it's like you got to figure out how to like survive and it, it is it is crazy like when you go through like um Kind of like we go went through the trenches together growing up, so I'm like I don't want to like turn my back on my brother, but you know, my brother lives the lifestyle he wants, and I live the lifestyle I want. So, you know, we we don't we're we're not the same, but it's okay. 
um you know i got and then there's this other guy bobby that's a 20 20 year old i gotta watch out for keep an eye on <laughs> watching him since he was born um and also you know what's crazy they showed like these masks because i remember i remember watching the news where they were saying oh these these uh what seemed to have been african americans uh robbing a bank happened to actually be, be two caucasian males and that's what i thought of right away when i saw that like those new masks are showing you how like like that new rubbery like it looks like real like on, on camera and it's just like I remember watching that and being like, oh, okay. And then, but I'm watching the movie and he's, he's like, my mask hurts. Like, he's like, a, he's like a little, she's like a child, man. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and I, I want to go back to what you were saying about, you know, kind of seducing that 16 year old. Like, they did a good <laughs> job. No, I'm, I'm serious because, like, I, I, I wanted to say something on that, but we just kind of. I kept uh, rambling, yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, were on a, you were on a good little roll, so I didn't want to interrupt you there. But, like, she, you kind of see her defensive at first. Like, she's not, she's not trying to interact with him. And you kind of see how he takes advantage of that you know like he he do, he manipulates her and that kind of goes back to what you were saying like she's she's not an adult she doesn't know she's getting manipulated i mean the the mom i guess she said that was her grandma you know her grandma's yeah. just trying to be a nice person you know she she's like okay yeah i saw you on the bus like makes sense come on in but even even the grandma's like are you you know she's a little defensive but she's like okay you know um, but the, the daughter, I mean, she's defensive at first, but I mean, as soon as, as soon as, um, he kind of kisses her and, you know, starts making out with her and stuff like that, then she's like, okay, yeah, we can go get in the car. Yeah. We could drive around and do this. You know, she doesn't really question it. Like, I don't know, man. It's, it's just, it's just crazy. And then she ends up getting arrested. That, that part pissed me off, man. Like it, it, because, it really, it really yeah. did feel like. Like, you know, she was black he, or something. Like, that That pissed me off. Like, why are you going to detain her? She was just walking. And yeah. even the guy, even, and that's fucked up. She she knew it was him. Like, that's got to be weird, right? She's 16, yeah. so she's still like a kid. Smoking weed, though, you know, so, so I'm saying they, they have, like, adult tendencies. Not adult, like, not that you can't smoke at a young age, but she's been around it, you know? Yeah. She's, like, what I'm trying to say, she might be a little street smart. And she kept her mouth shut, but that's fucked up, man. They detained her like that. Like, yeah, she you wasn't know, that street smart. She shouldn't let anybody drive that car. But, that's what I'm saying. She's going. She she doesn't know what to expect, and maybe she yeah. likes the guy. You know. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying. Is like he, if she was maybe a little bit older and had. Yeah, well, I guess I guess this is you know a learning experience. I mean, unfortunately, yeah. you know, and this this. I mean, is, she, uh, I mean, she could get out of it, but it's just kind of messed up like that. And also, yeah. too, the fucking that the thing that bothered me, the acid thing. He poured all that acid in his mouth, like that. That could kill. Oh, that, that could. Yeah, that that would that probably fried his brain. Yeah, and he's like, I, blah, blah, blah. I was like, that's messed up, man. Like, you know? he's just trying to do his job. But also, too, but, as a security guard, just call and don't try to serve, don't try to get people the 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 twelve dollars an hour, whatever it is, fifteen, whatever they're paying you. It's not worth it. Just yeah. kind of like call the cops, and here you are. I'm a security guard. Just there you go. But, and not that's trying the thing about not, Connie is like he he consistently destroys people's lives and has no remorse for it. Like, as long as he's all right, he's fine. You know, and even. You know, even even saying that he's protective of his brother, I mean, yeah, to to an extent. But hell, he <laughs> he let him get caught by the police. He wasn't taking care of him then. He wasn't taking care of him when he was. Because he wasn't listening back. to him. You know, he was like, he wasn't listening to him, so he had to go. He's like, yeah. like that's one thing I got. You can't protect. And even at the end, like the ending messed me up. Of the, the big, good times, a good time. Uh, the ending messed me up because <laughs> that guy was like, I was like, he's gonna go out the window. He's gonna jump out and kill himself, or either, or he's just gonna fall. And sure enough, he did, and he fell, and it's just like he didn't want to go back to jail. But look at, like, look, 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 like it's showing you that even though he really wasn't doing shady, th- I mean, he wasn't doing, like, he broke into that guy's house, yes, and that's he, he could, he could have got, he could have got, he'll get arrested for that. And the, the acid, he could have just got away. He could just, I mean, Robert Pattinson had it. I mean, um, Connie had it. So it's not like you know that guy's name is um, uh, what's his name, Ray in the movie, and his name is a uh, a buddy, the uh, what was it, it's called, buddy da, Deuce, buddy, let me see real quick. The buddy, buddy Duress. He's you're, Ray. Yeah, you're the, talking I, about the guy that he broke out. That uh, yeah, the guy. He goes, yeah, you. He, yeah, he tells but, him okay, that. Okay, so what? Where was he at the hospital when that happened? I can't yeah, so because he had all that neck gear on, so he just thought it was. It looks like his brother's from the profile. Yeah. Oh no, no. I'm saying like, could doesn't he die? He doesn't. He isn't he the one that falls and. Yeah, he's the guy that falls out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Where 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 did he fall? I can't remember. That's that's what I'm saying. Like oh, he falls off the um, he falls off the roof. Well, he falls off the the balcony. He's trying to escape, and then he loses his grip. See, that's the thing, people. 
when you go up somewhere, you have to go down. So even just because you go up a um, a uh, elevator and then you're on the on a on a balcony, you could still have to go down. There's still there's up and down. You can't stay up there forever. You know, even if the, even if they had unlimited water and, and electricity, you still would want to go down or whatever. But what you got to understand is your body gets tired. So when people start climbing, going up or climbing things, like they don't they forget their body's getting tired when we're doing that. So you got to do it fast. If you do stuff like that, you gotta be sure you're firm, not quick. Like me, you gotta not fast or not fast. You gotta be quick about things. You gotta make quick decisions. It's dangerous, and um, yeah, because you know we've done stuff like that. You know, when people put the, have you seen the thing where the people? Let me see if I can find it. Where like get like there's like a, a buildings on each other, but only like four feet apart, and then people like somebody will get on that and start putting their back on one end and their feet on the other, and they start climbing. Have you seen that before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's dangerous because people do that a lot, and then they get tired and they actually fall from like 50 feet. Oof. So that's why I'm like I don't play around like stuff like that, with stuff like that. I don't I don't I yeah. take it serious I take my life serious. So I'm just not trying to mess around like that. I mean I, I live I do other things, but um but like like that's crazy. I don't know. But also the mental health part of uh, Corey Elman played by Jennifer Jason Lee. Great performance. Great great mm -hmm. performance. She's kind of like she's kind of like a uh, sheltered girl. She's like a a trust fund kid. And yeah. and she and, and she's she's older, so he makes her feel younger. But it's the thing I love about it that, that he doesn't really he's not he's more worried about himself and his brother that he only kisses her like one or two times. He's never really affectionate with her. Mm -hmm. Well, he's kissing like, her whenever she's getting him money. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like that's, that's the only time. Like he doesn't really show any affection after that. So I like that too. I like that he's like you're just my sugar mama kind of thing. That's cool. Like they put a sugar mama in there. You know the I, I was reading on Uncle's trivia. I think you were gone. It said the film was inspired by the uh, Softy brothers' father's time working as a salesman runner for a man also named Howard in the Manhattan Diamond District. The Softy brothers and their father are also Jewish and uh, avid basketball fans. So the the I guess the the story the story is told through the, um, the character that gets fired or the guy that quits right in the jewelry store, mm. jewelry store. Yeah. So so it's probably about his dad. So so then so then this movie. Let's see. Um, I want to see what the, where they got the inspiration like this. Hired they, they the the Softy brothers hired uh, real cops for the mall chase scene. <laughs> um, uh, the guy who cut the guy the, at the end I didn't like the ending at first like the way it ends but then the 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 title the the end uh, what do you call it credits rolled and I started fucking sorry I started crying. I like the ending it's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful ending. Like I just started crying because. It, and it's the whole credits. It's not just. It's like it's like the movie. They just put, have to put the credits over it. It's, it's so beautiful. I want to go back and watch it. Like, it's so beautiful. Like, explain like, how like the way they ended the movie. Like, you got to be around the people that, that are kind of like like you. You got to be around your you your your uh, I don't know your, your people. Your you know, you got you have families and you're related to people. We all know that. But there's other there's other people that are like you and uh, you know internet kind of stuff or like you meet people randomly. You know you know jogging clubs or whatever. And I think that's that's what helps. And I, I think once he we kind of he, he's kind of accepting, like he's like, oh, I'm, I'm like these guys. And the way they're like, they make him feel welcome. Like, hey, hello, hey, come on, give him a chance. Um, what's his name in this movie? Uh, the brother. Uh, let's see, it's right over here. His brother's name is Nick. Nick. They're like, yeah, say, Nick, bring him in when he wants. Cause dude, when Nick I was is, on, Nick is, yeah, Nick. I was in a, I was on probation for seven years, man, and that shit broke me, but it built me too. It wasn't like I was doing stuff every time. It's just like I I messed up. Uh, I'm too honest. And if you like, I messed up on certain things, and they just kept adding, and then I and then I messed up again, and they just kept adding and adding, and then like the scent, this this role, the sense got fucking huge. Like probation, like like my cousin would laugh at me and be like, "Yeah, you're a slave of the state." And I was like, "Yeah, dude, you're half white. They don't mess with you. <laughs> like the cops don't mess with you when you get you don't. They don't. You get pulled over, and they didn't they didn't give him a DWI." And I was like, "That's messed up, dude." <clears throat> and uh, what do you got? But uh, but it's like. Like this going through all and seeing what what they're going through and seeing I kind of like I got I started crying at the end I was like damn it's a good story it's a, it's it's a it's a it's a nice nice way to end a, a hard movie like it's 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 tough man stuff watching that he's just you're literally going from one one scene to the next you're like boom 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 and it's 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 intense man what you what do you think did you get that same feeling because I I I really I I've started writing about um experience I had on probation after this movie after I watched the movie because it just inspired me to to be like dude tell that story that I that I've been telling people it's it's kind of weird. It's like, oh, I know, I can't tell it because it, you can't, you can't, you have to like, see it. So I'm like, well, let me just show you. I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. Let me show you what, what I went through. So it's kind of been like that. I, I do enjoy that. Well, you know, I do enjoy the podcast. I do enjoy having the network, uh, then the escape and whatnot, because I get to really get to understand movies, man. And they're making movies like this nowadays. You know, I can make movies like this. Like this is cool. Like I really enjoyed both these movies. But a good time. It was. I was. I actually thought it was another movie. I thought we were gonna watch, but. 
he was to Mark Lupo, man, to know how to know how to understand what side by side is and know how to and know you and me and what will go where we'll go you know yeah you know like that's pretty bad so another shout out to mark lupo um we got 30 more minutes I, do you want to talk anything else about good time because there's just a lot of a lot of good stuff in that movie a lot of messed up yeah. things in that movie yeah so good time man that that whole scene where they go and get the acid i mean it's just yeah no that the, it's well not even just that scene man it's the whole movie it's just it's it's almost like the both of these movies you just feel like you're getting in trouble like you just continue <laughs> yes. to get, you know like it's it's that that i think that's why why people enjoy these movies so much is like you're along for the ride but you don't have to face any of the consequences you know like this, yeah. is, this is one of those yes movies. exactly thank you thank, thank you yeah. that's what I, and and it's it's just like you get that gut wrenching feeling of like oh this was a terrible decision Howard why are you making this decision or this is why why are you breaking him out of you know the hospital like how are you gonna do this like what what's your plan here and you know Connie I don't feel is a necessarily bad person I just think that he is ah. Uh, Maybe like a sociopath. Is that what you know, that is? Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah. I, I think I think you know, to an extent, uh, because you know, typically sociopaths don't care about anybody but themselves. I think is what it is. You know, and it it does kind of feel that way. I mean, he he has no remorse for getting anybody in trouble. He has no remorse for lying to people or uh, doing that. And that that just may be a survival instinct over time. You know, uh, but. I mean, obviously he's robbing banks. He's, yeah. you know, he's well, still in, like, in also, the modern time, robbing banks like that. Also too, they don't know, but isn't, like, isn't he calling somebody saying like, Hey, I have your money. Like I'm on my way. So obviously he's in debt to somebody else. Yeah. And, and you don't even get that story. You know, like you, you go into this, like, okay, they robbed a bank. And that's, I think that's another cool thing about these movies too, is like, you you're like you're long for the ride and you're like okay this is about to happen next you know and you're like trying to figure and you're just like oh shit that how that didn't happen that way you know like howard with his you know opal like oh it's it's valued at millions of dollars and i don't you know you trust these characters when you shouldn't trust them you know like you you just kind of believe howard that he's like oh yeah he knows his stuff like this is worth millions of dollars and it comes out it's not even worth two hundred thousand dollars, you know. Yeah. And so, it's almost kind of like that instance of the um, unreliable narrator too. Is like you're you're getting information from somebody who's not reliable, you know. And so yeah. you, you shouldn't be surprised when it takes a turn for the worst or go Dude, to I, the left. That you know? that fucking scene with that Jew. Um, they get the pair of bells bondsman or pair of, whatever the guy was but oh, the, the the pawn shop yeah guy? or and, and good time the what? the guy who's getting his brother out the guy who's trying to get the guy um let me see i'll show you real quick oh the bells bondsman yes yeah yeah is that is that who that was the bells bondsman um played by the bald dude yeah his name is uh, eric pakert is eric the bell <laughs> eric the bell bondsman why does he look so familiar he did such a great performance i like this performance yeah. He's from Good Time, Wake Up, Occupational Hazard, The Trip. Oh, he's a new actor too, or maybe he's been around. No, his, that's really his fourth. That's his first role, and now he's doing. A, God, he did good for a first role. He had that's yeah. he has that, and he has three shorts. Holy crap! Holy crap! He's he did good for a first role. Yeah. Um, that part that he that that happened I that bet happened. He was a Bell's Bondsman. That happened to me, man. Oh, that could happen. You know what? He probably is a real Bell's Bondsman. That happened to me before. And that fucking pissed me off. Ah, oh, you already gave me that money. It's, it's already used. You get you don't get your money back. I need the rest and I'll get the service done. I was like, what? I hired you for this and this is what I, I don't like. I don't like your work. I could do better. And it's like, well, you messed up. And I was like, all right, fine. I didn't finish paying the guy. And then and then I end up somehow the guy really hustled me good because I was like, let's see. Let's see the end of this fucking coin. I'm already I already got I'm already out this much. So then later on, I paid him and said so to do the job. And he still didn't even do it because he's like, well, you didn't. You, the time ran out and he still took the money. And I was like, well, need my money back. He's like, no, I was like, all right. And I just realized never fucking working with you again. And he's still around Austin doing like shady shit, like doing stuff. But I'm like, nah, I'm not. I'm good. I I know who he is. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna out him. So, but it's like I'm just like, dude, it's just like uh, it's insane how like I don't know. I I just can't sleep at night, you know. I'm right, be able to so sleep. so that guy is actually a, 
a Bale's bondsman. <laughs> they only they initially only needed the office space for its location, and a well known a well known actor would play the part of the bondsman. It was months later that Eric was asked by film uh, director to play the part in the movie with Robert Pattinson. That's kind of cool. That's cool. So that means that that he's he learned it, and that well, he's basically just he's basically just um, learning. Yeah. How to do it. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm learning how to do this. So, um, man, that part pissed me off because that part I was like, I've had to deal with people. And like, he, didn't, he didn't look like that guy, but he kind of had the same like energy or kind of pit, like throughout. <clears throat> kind of like that sleaze ball. Yeah, I feel you. Dude, sleaze when ball. I lived in LA, I would go to these producer meetings and then some guys like, they just didn't, you, you try to figure out how to talk shop and these guys, they literally would like stand in the corner and be dressed like in these oversized suits, but they're like Armani suits or whatnot. And uh, but they were trying to so come out as uh, producers, and they're like, "If you dress like a producer, you will be a producer." And in my head, I was like, "I can create things, and that's called producing." And then they'd be like, "Shut up! You don't have any money." I'd be like, "Well, neither do you." I was like, "Yeah, but one day I will." So it's just like, but it's kind of like you know. It's just weird, like they 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 got, but they look like that. They like sleazy, like they put like the suits on like that. Like Doug Stanhope works that funny suit. I don't know if he, if he wears it on purpose or to be to make to do it. But like I'm like that's the kind of like that kind of suit, like the mismatched suit that doesn't work, that doesn't match, but it's still kind of like nice material. But um, you now I just kind of like that 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 kind of bothers me a lot. But no, it's just those producer guys like they look like that. So that guy looked like a Bell's Bondsman because he is a Bell's Bondsman, and now he's an actor. So that's good. Yeah, like uh, Robert. Um... Robert Lee Emery? The yeah, no, uh, no R. R. Lee Emery. R. Yeah. Lee Emery, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he yeah, yeah, built like, his, his acting career. Mm -hmm. Because he was just the coach, and then he ended up, um, he ended up, uh, what do you call it? He becoming the character. Instructor. Yeah. So let's let's get down to it. Let's what it. you got? All right. So you want to do IMDb first, and then I'll tell you what Rotten Tomatoes is? I -M -D -B. I bet, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and guess that these both have really high Rotten Tomato scores. It's gonna be uh, yeah, these are kind of like, those. these would be kind of snobby yeah, considered. I, mean, I saw, of, oh, I saw the movie. That's, that's, that's a serious movie right uh, there. Oh, my God. mommy didn't let me watch it, but I saw it. Real quick, Ben, we're going to do your thing. Guess the budget for good time. Okay, uh, for good time, 2017 is when that was made. So this is before Uncut Gems. Um, I'm going to say... Remember, it's independent. It's like a low movie, low budget. 50, 50 million. Okay. And then how much did it bring in? Uh, box office-wise? Yeah. 2017, 50 million. I'm going to say if they got if they were able to make another movie, it probably probably 120 million. Okay, so I don't know how much this matters. A24, I, I see a lot of people say, throwing that around. Like, if no, it, like, no, it matters. It matters. That distribution company is uh, known for having really art house kind of films. So, like I just, that, like I just finished. You didn't, you, you, like I just said, they have these people that talk about. Like, I don't know what's going with that. I was gonna try to put on you, <laughs> but check this out. No, man, actually, I was very surprised too. Like I, I was going that route too with you, and look at this. Two million dollars. That movie only cost two million dollars, but it only came in. It only brought in three point two. So it, it almost, you know, it brought in a, two million dollars. That's it. Yeah, that was it. Wow, that's awesome. That was, that that was straight is, up that's... acting. Wow. Yeah, I bet you that was just to pay the actors. Yeah, and I didn't. I didn't even really like. I didn't know about that movie. You know, so that's kind of, it's kind of crazy. But that that's insane. But uh, all right, Uncut Jim. How much? How much do you think it cost? Um. Oof. Shit. If that was only two million. I was way off there, and it only brought in three million. Yeah. Okay, so Uncut Gems is going to be probably closer to what I was originally thinking. Yeah, uh, the say first it again. one I'll say I'm going to say forty million for Uncut Gems to make. Now, what it brought in is going to be skewed a little bit, and here's the reason why. Um, it came out December 2019. Okay. And as you know, February 2020, everything got locked down. So it only had two months to gross anything. And then it got shoved onto streaming services. I'm going to say if it was a $50 million movie or 40 million, excuse me, 
I uh, probably only brought in maybe like 10, 15 million um, box office. The way you got there makes sense. It does. But um, most surprising. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Nin- 19 million to 50 These, million. That, was, it's 19 million? Yeah, that's got that. Yeah, 19 million in box wow, office. Dude, wow, man. I don't know that, how they're. The A24 right there, bro. That's what it's all about, dude. Yeah, but I mean, but yeah, but 19 million? Like, I would have I would have thought that Adam Sandler would have cost more than that. Kevin I, Garnett would have cost more. I know. They, uh, uh, I, guess, but I guess. I guess. I guess they, they're like, hey. Passion project. Yeah, I mean, uh, possibly. That's that's really cool. Uh, either that, I mean, you know, actors sometimes, they'll, I mean, especially well paid actors, they'll. They'll be like, yeah, I'll take this role because I really like the character. And and I guess Robert Pattinson and Adam Sandler both have that, you know, uh, ability to do that. They're well off. It's not like they're struggling for roles. Yeah, you're um, right. Absolutely you right. Know, so they can they can make a movie that's, you know, oh, yeah, you can only pay. Yeah, I'll just take five five hundred thousand. That's fine. You know, I mean, it was only shot in 35 days. Shit, if I can go and make. Uh, Which movies? Uncut Gems are a good time. Uh, well, you, did you say Good Time was shot in 35 days? Oh, 35 millimeters, my bad. 35 millimeters, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's... Um, yeah, keep going. Oh, sorry. I was like, uh, I, was, I was seeing what you were talking no, about. No, no, no. But, um, yeah, okay. Um, no, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, oh, man. Wow. I wouldn't have thought either one. And how, I, much did it, how much did it make? 50 million. So you got the 50 it brought right in. It, br- it brought in 50 million. Wow. Yeah. That's it's like impressive. It's, yeah, I mean, for nineteen million, that's. I mean, that they 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 showed it with the first one. They, there was a plus. I would think, yeah, I think if if you, they if somebody gave me a million dollars and I was able to bring back two million dollars, I think that's that's a sell. That's a I that's think a because so. I think because I feel like first time filmmakers for sure, they're they, you could give them a million bucks and they're get, you're gonna get back zero. You're gonna lose probably two million, you know. But if it's a if it could be a cult classic or it could be it's a good movie, it just doesn't something happened to it, you know, the pandemic or it it just didn't they came out the wrong time or something and they'll wait, you know, you got time. But um, yeah. but you know it's, it is kind of scary. So you can actually get like three or four movies done before people realize why are we giving this guy money or before they realize we need to give this guy more money. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so let's do the IMDb rating for Good Time 2017 rated R, one hour and forty two minutes. IMD rating of seven point three out of ten. With 110,000 votes. What you got? All right. So for Rotten Tomatoes, uh, for good time, I have a 92% on the tomato meter <laughs> out of uh, 293 reviews and an 82% audience score out of 500 or 5,000 plus ratings. Uh, Critics Consensus is a visual treat filled out by consistently stellar work from Robert Pattinson. Good Time is a singularly distinctive crime drama offering far more than the usual drama th- or genre thrills. Agreed. Yep. Yep. That is uh that's about right. Um but yeah, and then uh for you wanna go ahead and do um let's do uncut gems real quick. Uncut gems twenty nineteen rated R, two hours fifty minutes. It has a seven point four out of ten, but two hundred and sixty eight thousand views. All right, and then let's see here for Uncut Gems on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. This one's going to be pretty interesting. Ninety-two percent on the tomato meter uh, out of three point or uh, three hundred and forty-three reviews, uh, and a fifty-two percent on the audience score. Oddly Whoa. enough, out of ten thousand plus uh, verified ratings. So wow, what's what have we got? Yeah. There? Why? So uh, <laughs> that's uh, probably just because people are just like, I don't want to see Adam Sandler in this movie, and that's probably a lot of it. Um, but here's the critics' consensus. Uh, Uncut Jim re- uh, reaffirms the Safties as masters of anxiety-inducing cinema and proves Adam Sandler remains a formidable dramatic actor when given the right material. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, but, uh, no. I Both these movies, I think, are fantastic. I don't, I don't see why anybody... <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I do. I could understand why somebody wouldn't like to watch this movie just because the anxiety level. Uh, it yes. Bring. Yeah. No. But I if it. you know, I don't think I feel like the anxiety level in both movies is about the same. So it's it's got to be something along the lines. I don't know uh, why people wouldn't. What was the IMDb on? Uh, both of them were 7.4. 7.4. That's oh, no. Right. Uh, 7.4. Uncut Gems. 7.3. Good time. Okay. 
Man, so we, these movies were like freaking like like good a good pairing. Thank you, Mark Lupo. Appreciate it, there, brother. You did a great job um, hooking us up with these movies. So, are we gonna go new Adam Sandler movie or what? What are we doing? Um, I'm taking all I, all I know is I'm taking this off. Take it off. Um, I don't know where we should go from here. First off, I think we should give our ratings so. though. Oh, um, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, mine's pretty obvious. Mine's pretty easy. You're you're giving thirteens to both, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I got same. you. I got you, man. Uh, they're, they're, are... they're, they're fantastic movies. They are films. They're films. They're fantastic. <sighs> we yeah, we um, know what movie is and we know what the film is, we know what the flick is, but man, these are films. But real life scenarios, real life uh drama, real life com- um like uh, there's no comedy. No, there's no comedy really. in this. Not not, not, really. not an Adam Sandler not movie with no comedy. I mean, well, I mean, him getting in the trunk and naked and it's like, oh, okay, you yeah, know, like that's, that's embarrassing. It's, it's, I I didn't like that. <laughs> like I was like, I didn't but then like I it, th- but it could because be it was a daughter's recital, man. It could have totally messed cool. it up. Yeah, but but he had back clothes, so that's like kind of like oh, but those like that's like that's crazy because that's like how how telling his uh, telling his uh, his employee like, and I got put in uh, I got put in a trunk last night during my daughter's recital god let me tell you oh dang terrible. terrible but the funny now it is it's like it's it'd be like funny if we found out like you know you find out that um phil not phil uh arno is like his older brother this whole time he's just but they are family but not in that no, sense I, where it's I, like i think it's i think it's brother-in-law no i'm saying it would be funny like if you saw oh, a movie yeah. like that like a guy tor- torturing a guy and you find out it's just his older brother picking on him <laughs> like, <laughs> but uh but i give him 13 you get 13s yeah. I thirteen, you thirteen. Yeah, this is you meant unanimous across the board. Thirteen for the Safety brothers. Uh, Safety. Safety. Yeah. Um. The D I E S. You know the whole Spanish in my head messes me up. Um. Okay. Well, where should we go? What? Where should we? Where should we go? Ben. Nineties reference. Yeah. I mean, we got. You know, this, a, this is uh, this is uh, quite a place to be. We only had a few repeat offenders. Yeah, not, not Cause, too many. Because because um, we've been watching movies and we haven't been watching films. Look at this awards for good times got eight awards. Austin Film Critics Associated uh, Association's nominee. Oh, look at that winner. Uh, honorable mention: the next ten best picture contenders. Oh, Benny and Josh, they won. Um, Boston nominee, nominee winners. Con, they won Con soundtrack. For uh, yeah, they won the con. Wow, huh. now, uh, dude, the soundtrack is good, it, it, it hypes it up. Yeah, we didn't even really talk about does. that. We oh, didn't yeah, that. yeah, the, the music in both of them are very uh, they they keep you on the edge. I mean, they, even the music, I mean, makes you anxious, and uh, it's it's yeah, it's the, the, the entire the entire experience of both these movies is just. So here it is in the International Cinephile Society. Cinephile. Cinephile. The International Cinephile um, Society Awards winner for Best Actor Robert Pattinson, and I'm assuming the pre du, pre du jury is the best uh, jury uh, pick. I guess the house, the one that the people really like, and those the the brothers won, Benny and Josh. Damn. So that's pretty cool. So um, where should we go? Where, where should we go? I think we should go super comedies because you know what? Your boy's been doing the pre- I've been preaching. I've been going for teaching the, the good word. You see that? I got that got that my, my Bible there and I'm I'm preaching yep. the good word. Uh bubble boy then. Um uh, you know, bright and shiny. Uh, me me and Jake Gyllenhaal. So so you wanna do some comedies. Let's do some comedies. What oh comedies I just broke my I just broke my thing. Oh no. Oh this thing came apart. What's that? My tripod. I don't know what I just did. Just messing um, with it. I was being, I'm ben, a little nervous, I guess, and I just broke it. Don't break it. Don't do it. Oh, don't do it. You can, you can fix Be it. Honest. I believe in you. All right. Um, Anyways, we got to think. We got time. I'm just wasting. I'm wasting away here uh, with this. Let's, uh, let's see. So we have Adam Sandler movie coming out, and we just watched an Adam Sandler movie. Um, we should do uh, what else? There's we should do David um, Spade. I don't know. Adam Sandler, David Spade? Do you want to go nineties? You want to go? Where, let's. Oh, we could do Joe Dirt. You want to do? You want to go Joe 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 Dirt? If, Joe if Dirt too? If, if you want, no, God, no. Uh, I don't want to do that. I didn't, I couldn't even get fifteen minutes. I had I have I have, I have somewhere in my notes, but I I, I uh, there was a movie I was like I need to show Ben and down or somewhere like where I can see it. 
but I, I did, there was a movie I wanted to watch that was that was recommended to me, and now I'm like, oh man, um, I don't know what movie. Um, I don't know. Ah. Do you want? Do you just want to go? You want to go down this route? I've had this in here for a minute. Do you want to go down this route? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we've we've already done the Christmas. We could do the both of those. You want to do the? You want to do White, the? White Castle is really good. And then there is a go on that White Castle. Remember you told that guy, "Hey, could you give me some burgers? Come on, give me some sliders. I'm hungry." <laughs> God damn, that guy, bro, bro, bro. Like they made him really like annoyed, man. I was like, "He did a good job," because I've been around guys like that. Oh man, I'm hurt. My shoulder. If I go with him, I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> Let's. Oh my, my eyes are all fucked up, Tio. <laughs> I don't know, Tio. My eyes are all, all fucked, fucked up. up. Uh, let's do it. Let's do Harold and Kumar. I you think. want to do Harold and Kumar? Yes, let's do it. And you want to go? And you want to do? Um, you want to do the, go, go to Guantanamo Bay and the? Oh yeah, we do both of do those, both? and we just we we uh, we finish off the trilogy, you know? Yeah. Just, well, we uh, got. Oh well, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, man. There's. Um, we just finish it off. Roll the. All right, so we got roll that one. The, roll the roll. Roll the roll. <laughs> I think is I think some slaps at comedy will be will be worth it for us, and you know just get the hell out of it. This is I, I don't want to do anything serious right now. I'll do yeah, that. No, we've we've had enough serious anxiety driven action going on. Okay, so we could do Harold and Kumar, or we could also go back. I was also thinking Mike Judd off of Space and um, Extract, but I think this has already got. I think I think I think Harold and Kumar is a little bit better. All right, we'll go this route. Go and we'll, we'll we're just going this and see this is cool too because you know we're just going hard left. You know it's it's not it's not really like connected to anything. It's just like two funny movies and sometimes you need that. Sometimes you don't need a connection. You just yeah. need to pick something new and then go with it and then we can start a new thread. All right, because I also think I'm gonna start something next next time if I can. I'm gonna put some time into it. I want I want to bring a little bit more fire, more sauce to the show. No but here we go. Our saucer, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, 2008, rated R, one hour, 28 minutes. Adventure comedy. A Korean American office worker and his Indian American stoner friend embark on a quest to satisfy their desire for White Castle burgers. Uh, director Danny Leiner, uh, writers John Hurwitz and Hayden uh, Solosberg. <laughs> Uh, stars John Chu, Cal Penn, and Ethan Embry. We're gonna put that. We're gonna put that. We're just going. We're doing it. A double dose of Harold and Kumar. We're gonna put Harold hey. and Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay, 2008, rated R, one hour and 54 minutes. Adventure comedy. After being mistaken for terrorists and thrown into Guantanamo Bay, Stoner Harold and Kumar escape and return to the U.S., where they proceed to flee across the country with uh, federal agents in hot pursuit. Directors John Horitz and Hayden Schultzberg. Uh, writers John Horitz. And Hayden Schultzberg, and stars John Chu, Cal Penn, and NPH Neil Patrick Harris. NPH. Oh yeah, man, that's that's the main that's that's the the ticket, man. This movie brought back NPH. It did the franchise, yeah. I was yeah. I was I was, re, I was actually reading about that earlier, how it revitalized his career. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean uh, Harold and Kumar is kind of like our generation's Cheech and Chong, except you know he didn't have record albums or anything like that but. yeah oh they did i don't oh, know they didn't yeah well i mean well, technically jane and bob would be cheech and chong right gen x's our generation you're right so it's cheech yeah. and chong jay and silent bob harold and kumar oh my god i haven't done anything for this for these younger ones i better do something we gotta make a i do have a stoner movie i have two stoner movies i've, I've kind of written maybe i can mm. write them between these movies i mean i have the i have the ideas you, I know, have you know they you know they sell I mean, they, they keep do. making them every every ten years. They have to, man. So let's put it this way. So what would be? So what would be next? There's no one next after this, is there? I mean, it's the Seth Rogen era of just smoking weed. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then this is also, you know, in 2008. I mean, it's is it legal in California yet? No, no. Oh, uh, recreational, no. Yeah. But uh, medical, so, I think so. So I mean, even then, you know, like you, it's not legal. Yeah. <laughs> and so. It's. I think that's. I think that may be where you get that that stoner movie from. Is like, oh, you know, it's not legal. So, yeah, you know, it's. Uh, that's what makes it funny too. Is that that. Uh, that's why you you have you know teenagers drinking and having a good old party time. You know, <laughs> stuff. It's stuff they're not supposed to be doing, and that's that you want to live live through them. That's that's why they make those movies. 
Oh, they bring it back. Yeah, the nostalgia. You're right. You're absolutely right. Hey, is that a is that is that pig a boy? A boy's a pig. Of course, he's a boy. Look at the size of that sausage. <laughs> From Farsi Blues, you say parties. Did you took my mind to you can all the parties? Yeah, never miss them since 1984. Never miss. <laughs> all right, put down down there. Put down that beer. Pick up that pot. Put it over your head. Close your eyes. Oh no, put that down with our cigarette. Now put put that pot over your head. Close your eyes and think real hard. And say, I'm stupid when I'm about to get hit in the nuts. <laughs> so we uh, did what Tweeter does. Tweeter, they Tweeter drink beer because Tweeter drinks beer. And, uh, well, you know, I have noticed when we do more film, our, our time is shorter. I noticed that when we do movies, we were just kind of like, dur, 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 dur. and then you're like, CJ, what's wrong with you? And then, <laughs> and then, uh, and then when we do films, it's, they're always a little bit shorter. So I'm, I'm stretching this time I have on the show. Um, you know, why not, right? Why not do a little why selfish not? plug? Remember, this is mental health, and these movies are very. I, I honestly think uh, these are very mental health movies. Like get all, that 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 ending of, of good time is so important. Like I I, I don't understand. How, it's I don't know how to explain it. You just you understand it. You just watch it. and You get it. And I do have a show on Monday nights called My Manic Mondays on the Indie Escape Network. Um, like and subscribe. This is uh, where I um, talk about. It's like a it's like a weekly vlog I have. And so where I kind of talk about things that I'm, I'm, I'm mainly doing. I do have guests. I have guests on this show. And uh, I do need to get a guest for Monday. So i <laughs> still working on that. But uh, yeah, I got a show. But, you know, I, I think a lot of um, a lot of these um, like uh, movies about mental health. Like this, I don't even know if it's like if I have an advocate for this movie. But I think they're like, they, they, they got it. They, whatever, whatever. I picked up on it real easy. Like I was like, oh, they, this is good. So I was very proud and happy that these movies exist. Because it's like, and also like. It's also like New York guys, right? The New Yorkers, aren't they? Yeah. The, yeah. the, the Softy brothers. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, I don't know. But I do got to go to work. So I, I do. So I should be getting us off because you and I are going to still talk for a little bit. So anything else, Ben, I mean? Um, nope. I'm good. I'm All right, good. everybody. We'll see you next time with Harold and Kumar, though. Harold Kumar 1 and 2. And I am not Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am Kumar. All right. Later.